Oh, you see? Now I'm finna block this off from writing. <laughs> Kayla! That's it. Mm -hmm. Get your goalie gummies here. Okay? Get your goalie gummies here. All right. Now, before I let this whole come on here with her shameless plugs and do the things that she, I'm going to go ahead on and get ahead of the curve and let y'all know that December the 3rd, Craig the Delicious Writer Stewart, the Delicious Writer Stewart, that's what we're going to start adding to this whole name. Craig the Delicious Writer Stewart and Derek J will be premiering their first their very first tour together, girl. They, they done went down there and stole everything from me. <clears throat> and then she done came over here and stole everything from me. And after they done stole everything from me, they runs down there and they, and they do. It's okay. But that's what, that's what friends are for. And uh, here we go. They going to be down there to the uh, December the 3rd. Where they going to be at? Let me see. Down there to the gay like me. The gay like me. Conversations will be Friday, December third in DC. Now, see what I should have did was popped up to that, but you know, ain't nobody paid me to do that. And just like Craig wanted her money when she worked for the Queen Supreme Court, I won't mind. But I should have popped up there to DC, honey, gave y'all a surprise poppy in, honey. It's gonna be at the Arc Black Box Theater, eighteen oh one Mississippi Avenue Southeast, Washington DC two o o two o. Please get your tickets Friday, December 3rd at 8 p.m. Eastern. The doors open sharply. Uh, well, the show starts sharply at 8 p.m., 8 p.m., but the doors open at 7. Now, because I just seen Craig over there reading Legacy and stuff like that. I was like, bitch, stay, I'll get out my friend. But, you know, that's another thing. All right. Without further, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let me bring on the doll, the diva, the deity of of shade and mess. Craig, the writer school. <laughs> you see, I got my reading glasses on. Well, I've been had on mine, and this was by this was by force. <laughs> yeah, because I saw your post the other day where you said your eye was acting a fool. Child, it's acting a fool, honey. You start getting in your forties, headed to your fifties, girl. Them eyes go to do it like this. I'm like, wait. Well, girl, see, I don't have those problems because see, I eat grass and leaves and things, so. Well, what you got your glasses on now for, girl? Well, these don't have no prescription. I just got these on just for, you know, style and comfort. Oh, that's what it gives. Uh-huh. Well, you know, you looking real, you looking mighty gay in this sweater right here. You looking very gay like me in this sweater right here, girl. Well, you know, I like my shit to feel extra, fit extra tight and stuff and snug, you know. Oh, if somebody put, oh, it's for wide Friday. Let me put mine on. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, let me get my mouse out because I know I'm going to need a lot of... I'm, I need to put my mouse over here on the table because it's a lot of mess. Going on. <laughs> Look, I usually do fine nigga Friday, but I ain't feeling too fine today. I need let a haircut. Let me get my mouse out of here, girl. But, but it's Craig, okay. Before we even start getting into that, tell me about your legacy perform, your legacy experience. Girl, I was hoping you gave me a moment to, to, to discuss that. <laughs> I was tearing Lettucey up on Twitter the other day. <laughs> and I love Lettucey. And you know, she's a friend to the, you know she's a friend to the TS. You well, know this. She my friend, so. Oh! <laughs> but no, I love Lettucey. We went to the show the other night. It was Tuesday night in Atlanta. It was at the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. And um, the, the, the doors opened at 8. Well, the show started at 8. The show started at 8. Wait a minute, Craig. Hold on, hold on. Before you, before you even get into your legacy stuff, um, I just need to uncover something here. Uh -huh. Something needs to be uncovered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this. <laughs> Beyonce, stop acting like that now. <laughs> Let me finish my story. <laughs> Well, girl, what's the tea? I mean, the girl, girl, the girl, the girls are looking. <laughs> the girls are looking. What's well, listen, the tea? You know, th th there's a scripture somewhere uh, that says, you know, if you're not good to yourself, 
I don't know what scripture that is. And don't go to do it because Miss Mary is watching the show and she will correct you by the scripture. <laughs> look, look, ain't nobody gonna be good as good to you as you are gonna be to yourself. Amen. Well, they thinking that it's an engagement ring, Craig. I mean, no, but I mean, he definitely ready to marry me. I mean, you know, there is a song by Rashida that says, put it on and make him want to marry me. <laughs> no, I bought this myself. I bought this. Can I finish my legacy story? Go ahead, girl. I just, I was, I was just letting the people know that I'm, I'm, I'm definitely in tune to what they're saying down there in the comment section to this morning. So I went to see Lettucey the other day. The show started at 8 o'clock. Lettucey strolled her little ass out there at 9.20. And, you know, because I pride myself on trying to be on time for shows and stuff, I was there at 7.45, 7.50 in my seat. And she strolled out at 9.20. So I got on over to my Twitter and was like, uh, I was tweeting from the show. I was like, Lettucey girl like it's a school night this was on a tuesday I was like, girl it's a school night why aren't you on this stage yet so girl, she didn't respond huh but you ain't had to go to school though craig and you're not a teacher i pulled you out of that life yes you did but i was still considerate of the people who had to get up the next morning to go to work okay and so i tweeted again because her opening act came out at 8 10 her opening act was done by 8.40. And again, Lettucey didn't come out until 9.20. And so she, from 8.40 to 9.20, the DJ was playing music. You know how they play that old school stuff. And, you know, and after, you know, after the first few songs, you're like, okay, okay. But then after a while, you're like, okay, bitch, I'm tired of sitting here. My knees starting to lock up. Well, girl, you eat vegetables and grass and greens and things. Your, nothing should be wrong with your knees. Only Miss Mary's knees should be locking up. <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't tweet me back until the next day. And so she went into this whole, you know, explanation of, you know, she's never late for a show. Um, her show is always scheduled to start at nine o'clock. And I'm like, well, actually it wasn't because girl, I tweeted at 920 and you still weren't on stage. So she was just saying how she had a meet and greet earlier. She was in the building at 5 p.m. And she was just like, you know, they put that little extra space in there just in case there are any technical issues. You know how you be having over there at the Queen's Supreme Court. But um, yeah, that show that you that you slightly was producer on. But you know, <laughs> you know when we had those when we had those technical problems, that was all ascribed to Mo, <laughs> who you were, who you was, he was, you were his POC, and you correct on top of that. <laughs> Correct. Let's not do me. Craig, do many things this morning, but don't do it. Now, when I revived the Queen Supreme Court, girl, honey, with a new showrunner, girl. Girl, there will never be another one of me. So anyway, so listen. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she finally came out at 920. And like I said, she was tweeting back, you know, explaining. And she was like, but people were still coming in at 830. And I said to her, I said, I don't care who's coming at 830. They were late. The show started at 8. Don't tell me nothing about who was coming in at 8.30. So you just going to antagonize her. Girl, why, she wasn't doing... And I see you liking her to Lauren Hill. Oh, yeah, I did. I said, man, don't become another hashtag Lauren Hill. Because, listen, I love Lettucey, but Lettucey, you're not that famous to have us out there waiting an hour and 20 minutes. Uh-uh, don't you do Lettucey like that. Lettucey, don't you do that. I love Craig, Lettucey. But I believe everybody, that, is, everybody should be held accountable, right? Because when you all show up on December 3rd in D.C. at the Art Black Box Theater for Gay Like Me Conversations, we are going to be on time. Derek J is going to have his heels on, his purse, his hat <laughs> hand, and he is going to be on time. <laughs> Craig, we don't have, have the people waiting. Well, I would like to know, how did you get that theater? Because we never had that type of theater at the... Uh, at the Queen's Supreme Court. Was this a Lonnie B situation? Thank you, Lonnie B. I knew y'all was trying to... I, she is, I don't know if you all picked up on this, but girl, that was... Girl, I'm bleeding over here, girl. You sliced me just now. With that I question. knew y'all was over there plotting on me this whole time. Y'all used to be on the phone talking to me. Talking. I was girl, like, girl. But, but see, but see let, let, those of you that are watching, let me tell you how you do the enemy. This is how you do the enemy. You got to pay her with a compliment first. Uh, Madison, you and I never did the black box theater because the crowds that we were bringing in for the Queen Supreme Court were too big for this, okay? 
Oh, okay. I yeah, that, this, this is too small for what we were doing. Craig, I understand. It's better that you. It's better this way. <laughs> but, but yeah, Lottie D did um, put me onto this venue. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying. To but yeah, because I just got a new mouse, Craig, and I was trying to. I'm trying to see if it's battery powered or okay. Here it is it's on. Girl, she still ain't figuring it. out stuff before the show starts. She still wait to get on the show and then start figuring stuff out. Girl, that's my vice. That's one of my vices, girl. <laughs> Let me have my vice, okay, niece. Thanks. <laughs> I want to talk about this foolishness from last no, night. Now. Talk about it. We need to get you. We need to get because see, we we we. we I, I like to segue into this the showmanship. <laughs> <laughs> Good showmanship, you know. Uh -huh. So, did you ever get it? Like, so did you? Did you actually enjoy? Did you enjoy the concert period or at all, Craig? I did enjoy the concert. I enjoyed the concert. My issue was just, you know, we were sitting out there for. That's a long time to ask people to wait for you to come out. You know what I'm saying? If the show starts at eight o'clock, and you know there are going to be people who are going to show up at ten minutes to eight, seven forty-five, whatever, because you know you got to get your drink and sit down. And all of that stuff. And they got these COVID restrictions and shit now. So, you know, people trying to get to the venues early so that they can, you know, get through the door. You got to show your vaccination card or your proof of your negative COVID test. I showed a proof of my negative COVID test. And um, also, you, you know, so I take it that you're not getting vaccinated. No, not why they still experiment with y'all. Why they got to be experimenting with y'all and, and just, you know, what was Well, because I mean, because originally they said y'all just needed to get those two shots. Now it's, oh, we need to get y'all a booster and you might need an extra booster. I'm predicting about three, four, five years, y'all ears and shit gonna start falling off. Well, listen, my ears was falling off when I put that silicone in my ass years and years ago. <laughs> so. <laughs> ah! Woo! Oh my God. Oh my God! So we're not gonna sit up here and act like that, girl. You know we Listen, don't know what's I got going a call on. the other day from the CDC. No, from Emory. Uh -huh. They wanted me to sign up for a clinical trial. Of what? For prep. And so, of course, you have to be <laughs> HIV negative to try prep. You know, for them to put you on prep. And they were gonna pay a thousand dollars. But I said, girl, I ain't getting on that shit. I thought about it for a quick second. Well, you in a monogamous relationship right now with your husband, and so you don't really Correct. need those things. Correct, but you know they 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 doing a study on your reaction, like your chemical reaction to prep, and so I was gonna do it. And they were like, "Well, you only have to take the pill twice," and so I was gonna do it. But I was like, "Bitch, I don't need my damn kidneys and shit falling out and shit fooling with them." Especially, but see, you eat leaves and grass and flowers and stuff, Myrtle. Ain't nothing never gonna happen to you. Your immune system gonna, if anything get in you, it's gonna come out. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, so I, I was I signed up at first and then when the lady followed up for the appointment, I said, girl, I'm not coming to that. I said, I don't want to do a clinical trial. I know clinical trials are necessary, but they're gonna have to do that shit with a cadaver. They're not gonna do that shit with me. Well, speaking of clinical trials, Craig, let's mm -hmm. just segue right on there. Do you think that it was prescription for the old doses of the situation last night? <clears throat> I think what Shaka Khan was suffering from last night was a mixture <laughs> of uh, prescription, a little coke, <laughs> a little Ciroc, a, little, mm -hmm. a little, lot of Ciroc, a little prescription. Yeah, um, 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 amphetamines. Uh -huh. Something was going on because she was real. <laughs> and listen, what we need to do at this exact moment right now is give a standing ovation for to Stephanie, Stephanie Mills. Mills because she was doing that show for two people last night. So Not we, only do we need to do a standing ovation for Stephanie Mills, but I, listen, I got some people working on, I, look, I tagged the shade room last night. I said, I'm going to need you, since y'all doing reporting and stuff, I'm going to need somebody to get Stephanie Mills cash app because she deserves a bonus for last night because she carried the show for both of them. I mean, there was a moment where she put her hand behind Shaka's back because Shaka kind of, kind of stumbled 
when I was sending you those clips just now of them, there was a moment where she grabbed her by her back because she was stumbling. Let me see. Let me see if I can actually pull one of those clips in what you sent me, bro, because Kayla also sent me some clips last night that I saw. But Craig, it was, you know, and, and listen, we love our Shaka. We love her. We love our they Shaka. They looked amazing, both of them. Yes. They both look amazing. Now, Stephanie is the only one that sounded good. Now, and, and, and here's what I need you guys to understand. Stephanie was singing without lead vocals. There was a background track playing, but her voice was up front. Shaka was singing with the lead vocal playing in the back. <laughs> Craig, I got the I, I just want to make sure that you all were, were aware of what was happening. And, and, and even in that instance, Shaka's, her timing, her syncopation was off. Like the, she was behind the track. Like the, the yes. track was ahead of her. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> can somebody tap her? <laughs> and then there was a point where she said, fuck that shit. Th did you hear that? I did. Fuck that shit. I was like, oh, my God. And Hold somebody on. gave her the good sense to sit her ass down and take them heels off. Now, I was over there. I was over there for like a good. I was over there the whole. I, I tried to watch the entire show because I wanted to give, you know, my honest opinion um, about the show. I do think that they looked great. Both of they them did. looked great. Um, I do think that they sound they sound aged. Somebody brought in the comments that they are uh, 60, that Gladys was Shock 68. Shock is 68. Shock, Shock is 68. But we actually saw Patty and Gladys just earlier this year do a versus. And Gladys, Gladys's rich tones were all still intact. Gave you the best. Now, I do notice that you that you, that you you gave Gladys her flowers. she Because her tones were intact. Gladys is told the, the unspoken Patty. says a lot about <laughs> Patty. The unspoken about Patty says a lot. Now Gladys' tones talking. were intact. Gladys sounded amazing, and Gladys was sitting down for the most part. Now Patty, her notes were well. Listen, Patty. Wait, wait a minute. So here, here go Patty's notes. <laughs> some were down here. Some were up here. <laughs> Girl, she had to get her footing, Craig. She needed to get her footing. <laughs> Where are my cue cards, did... honey? Where are my cue cards? <laughs> she needed to get her footing, Craig. She needed to get her footing together. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Where are my bad guys? Next card, honey. Next card. Next card, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, <laughs> baby, I shun him up. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, but I thank God. Honda, baby, I shot. God, look on right now. In the name of Jesus, healing hands, touch and deliver. Healing hands, touch and make whole. Hallelujah, ha. Huh? I know, baby, baby, I shot. Look on every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. Hey, baby, I shot, though. God, we came to praise you. We came to lift you up. We came to magnify. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to yeah, convert. You want to pull up that patty clip. <laughs> I was about to, but we. I got to convert these over to, uh, I got to convert these clips over into, uh, mm, mm, mm. They, they, you know, this ain't no do uh, MOV. They do only uh, MP4. <clears throat> so I got to oh, okay. convert this stuff over. But here. no, in all sincere and ser sincerity, Stephanie Mills, her voice does sound a little aged. I will give you that for real. She definitely sounds the same, but she could she couldn't sustain those notes like she used to. Because when she sang "Home" at the end, I don't know if you watched at the end. She ended when, when she says "Like home." She holds that note. She cut that note like 10 seconds short. The band was still playing. They were her like, like When I think of home. Girl, Shaka was finna walk out of that shit. She said, damn, damn who I live with. 
And the fact that Stephanie had to help Shaka sing her songs, I was I was in the verses writing, and I said, "Well, thank God Stephanie knew her songs. Stephanie knew Ste uh, Shaka songs, even though they did have a little teleprompter down there. But for the most part, she knew uh, Shaka songs, so she could help her. Because I was like, so you gonna sing her songs and your songs? That's right. Travel little. Ooh, now listen, when it when it when she hit that, travel little angel." Inconsistent flying high, much of the time. Drama queen. Oh, I was like, girl, I saw it, Craig. I saw it. And was that Shaka's daughter that came out there with that purse on her shoulder? I'm like, she couldn't have left that purse backstage. <laughs> <laughs> why, why she come up with that purse hooked on her on her hip like that? Talking to you, angel. I was the, like, the daughter came out there on sweet thing. Uh, I will love you anyway, even if you cannot stay. I don't know who gave it to her, Craig, but they shouldn't have gave it to her. And if you, if, if you didn't watch, Swiss Beats said in the comment section, <laughs> what he say? Uh, I'm apologizing in advance. And you, I'm going to tell you what else. Timbaland was down there, too. He said, so we really going to make it to 20 songs? But Shaka started to sober up as the, as the show went along, though. Yeah, that means the cookie went to wear it off, honey. It started wear it off. She looked good, though. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be honest. With her hair looked good. Excuse me. Her makeup looked good. I even like what she had on there. I didn't like them heavy ass boots she was walking around in. I just knew those. No, they had to come get her out of those. Hold on, here we go. <laughs> I just kept thinking like that is and you know listen for those of you who may not know Shaka has had a history with um the narcotics yes she has and she's been very open about it she's been very open about it and that's why nobody can't get you with your own news they can't get you with your own news exactly so I was just like, but but for me, that's the way she sounded on most of the songs. Like she was under the track. She was behind the track. Like the track was a little ahead of her. Like it's like she wasn't keeping up with the lyrics. She, you know what I'm saying? And then sometimes she was mumbling the songs. Her notes were everywhere. And I was just like, Am I, is this really happening? Like seriously? Hold on, I'm trying to select the format that I'm gonna put this video in. You're trying to pull another one? Oh yeah. I wanna give it. Yeah. But I did love the moment where Stephanie Mills brought her son up on the stage because he's um he's autistic. Oh. So I did yes, love she, that. Yes, yeah, she did that because I never knew love, love like, like this before. before. Uh-huh. Open my eyes, never, <clears throat> never. Yeah. Never knew. Mm -hmm. So okay, on. Oh, okay, MP4. There we go. I had to get it to this girl because it was not. Oh, they say he has Down syndromes. I thought he was autistic. Is it Down syndromes? I'm saying oh. syndromes. Oh, they said it's Down syndrome. Okay. Oh. Here, we got. I got to get one more clip, Craig, because this the one. Mm-hmm. And then there was a moment where uh, where Shaka was like, "Do y'all know the words?" I was like, "Girl, no. Do you know the words?" <laughs> that's the question, right? If you really want to know, that's the like, damn. Okay, what am I doing next? What's up? I'm like, she ain't got no playlist up there. Like, girl. But when I seen when I seen Switch Beat say, uh, "I'm apologizing in advance." I was like, Father God, be a look. You know, Charlemagne then wore them out today. I, 
girl on the they should. Side. okay hold on let me see um i think i got it craig i think recent is it the same one hold on i don't think it let me convert the other one <laughs> somebody said shaka was giving me wanda from holiday heart <laughs> let me see I'm Stephanie was over there like, and Steph, did you see Stephanie do like this? Like she was calling somebody from the uh, back. <laughs> she was like, ah! that was terrible. Yeah, thank you. And, and if, listen, if we're going to be completely honest, Shaka has far more hits than Stephanie. So she really should have been able to mop her up. But see, Stephanie got good sportsmanship. I mean, and, and to be honest, you could tell that Stephanie was trying to save her. You know what I'm saying? Like Stephanie was just like, oh, this is my sister and I'm going to take care of my sister. You know what I'm saying? We need to support each other. And this, that, all of that was great. You know what I mean? And Stephanie talks about a lot of that on her Instagram. She always talk about black women needing to be protected more by black men and, and how R&B um, has been taken by the colonizer, AKA white folks. But so she's always talking about stuff like that, right? So she's kind of gave you, gave you a little bit of that last night, but she was definitely trying to be her sister's keeper last night. Yeah, when she should have just tapped on her shoulder and said, sus, go back. Let's there. just re let, reschedule. Let's just re no, just let them give you a ginger ale. And you watch me say, let me get, let this be a, let this be a tribute to me from, from me to you. Or better yet, what she should have said was, you know what, sis, let's just let them play the albums. We we just gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about them in between. <laughs> and you know, and I really felt like this was like not a comeback for Stephanie. But it was almost like, cause like Stephanie was like, "Yeah, girl, we need to go on tour with this show. If y'all gonna be like that, bitch, I ain't coming out there. Nobody's coming to that. You think I tore Lettucey up on 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 Twitter the other day? <laughs> girl, those girls gonna get you in, in the public, Craig. Girl, I'm trying to get this other video, girl, because ah, this was but, this but I, I felt like me. Stephanie was trying to lock in some future gigs. She's like, "Girl, we need. To, would y'all come to see if it's we on tour?" You know, she was saying shit like that. But I'm like, girl, ain't nobody. Because uh -uh. see, Stephanie was on The Breakfast Club several months ago. And she really, she talked about wanting to do it. And originally, Shaka Khan's manager told her no, they declined. And then they came back and said, okay, well, let's go ahead and do it. So I really kind of feel like Stephanie was really thinking that this was going to be something to kind of jumpstart her career again. And I'm like, girl, ain't nobody coming to see y'all on no tour. At least I'm not. I would. Not if Shaka gonna carry on like that. It would uh it would really give it, it would really turn it for me. Cause I would really go there and get me a piece. It's crazy. I would be so upset if I paid my money and, and I, I would have been okay with Stephanie. But if I got to the show and Shaka did like that with all of those songs. Craig, I would go there and get me a piece. I'd be pissed. Okay, I think I got it, Craig. Okay. Well, I got it. I think that's I got it. it. I got it. Go I got it, Craig. Hold on. Let me let me load it because I got to find it on here. Because you know when you know when you got a Mac. Because you got a Mac, Myrtle. Uh huh. You know what a Mac gives, girl. It gives a lot, and you be over there right. trying to figure out, girl, honey, these things, especially when you coming from a PC world. Well, look. So while you getting that, this song that you about to play, I was in I was in the comments again yesterday. Like, is Erica Badu around? Can she? Say well, here you go. Here you go.
<laughs> you see how my brain that went lower, girl? <laughs> girl, I can't even see your eyes. Right. <laughs> but see, do you see what I'm talking about when I said she's singing to the lead vocal track, but she's behind it? It was like the, she was she wasn't she wasn't singing exactly with it. It was like the lyrics were the track was ahead of her, and we ain't even got to talk about what key she was singing in. <laughs> She's sixty eight years. Murder. Let's just give the people what they want. She's sixty eight years old. Murder. She done done it, and she's possibly saying to all of us out there, "Girl, I done sung the songs. Now you sang it." But Madison, it ain't even about her age though. It's about her activity before she came on that stage. We just said Gladys is like 119. She is. She and she, is, but she, she sang well. She went up there and mocked Patty. <laughs> and you know, I don't even, you know, I love my picture, my Patty. But she mocked Patty up. <laughs> Girl, I'm so proud of you for saying this on here. <laughs> <laughs> listen, because listen, we Madison and I have talked about this before about how Patty got her ass served to her when she and Gladys did that that verses. Now, Patty, of course, has more songs that I like over Gladys, but Gladys, again, because of showmanship, she mopped Patty up. Now, see, Madison doesn't usually say this in front of y'all, but see, we had already talked about this. <laughs> Patty, the, Patty makes pies really nicely now. <laughs> Patty needs to stick to the pies. <laughs> those, oh, are pie. those are pies. Those are those are Walmart pies. She got an apple cobbler too, doesn't she? Oh, doesn't she have an apple cobbler too? <laughs> 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 she got an apple cobbler too, doesn't she? <laughs> I cannot believe that you said Gladys mopped Patty up on the live. I cannot believe you said it. It's no shake. You usually let these people beat me up by myself. <laughs> it's no shake, Red. Oh my God. But Shaka got some hits, though. She got some hits. And when she sang I'm Every Woman, and I know she's the original, you know, originator of it, but I immediately thought about Whitney. I immediately thought about Whitney, how, how her rendition just kind of rejuvenated that song. You know what I'm saying? It made it a hit again. Not and I was just like, well, I wonder who... Huh? You saw that foolishness I posted the other day on my Instagram. Which one? Well, those white girls were sitting around there talking about Taylor Swift. I didn't see that one. One moment, please. Hold on. You got it already? Okay. I mean, I literally thought about Whitney, and I was like, who wrote um, I'm Every Woman? I don't know who wrote it, but I was like, if Whitney's version did, I know, and I know it didn't sell as much as um, her remake of um, I Will Always Love You, but whoever wrote I'm Every Woman definitely made a check off of Whitney too. It wasn't as big as Dolly Parton's check. Wait a minute, I got to get over here. I got to hear this. Hold on. No, I'm about to send it. I'm about to convert. I'm going to have to do a lot of cutting out on my okay. uh, <laughs> On my video, let me, see. let me see if I can get it real quick. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go I'm gonna get it. Out. So, you don't want me to play it? Oh, and it came in as an MP4. One moment, please. Oh, it did. It. Oh, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm. My God, today. My God, today. Looks like it's gonna be one of those shows tonight, honey. <laughs> <laughs> That's Miss Pay Oh, yes, he came on through. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But I hope this ain't no porno. We'll see in a moment. Girl, I'm real pure. Don't have me up here with that. You pure what? You use pure? Pure for me? Mm. It's uploading, Craig. Oh, uh, okay. It's going to make you mad. But I think people were, and then they had technical problems last night. We didn't even talk about that. 
it was I'm talking about on the internet, like when you tried to sign into the live. I mean, I know they had technical problems there too because they started an hour late or whatever. They mixed up this, it was, the, the it was time zone. Huh? It was crisp on YouTube. It was crisp on YouTube. Yeah, that's where I ended up watching it. But I started it on my phone on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh no, this is crazy. Because when I first went in there, it showed like 64,000 people, but there were no comments. Craig, get and your, I need you to get your, get your, uh, get your cup of ice. One moment. All time. That? So she just let other people do all the work for her and took all the credit. Anybody else, just take it. Granny, you're the fucking worst. Just take it. What makes you say that? He sucks. It wasn't an invitation to have fucking nail camera. Brennan, who the oh, fuck yeah. are you? God, I hate Brennan so much. Alright, come on, Nate. Alright. Brennan's not working. Alright, what do you say? I'll talk. I'll talk for two seconds. This this Whitney Houston argument is stupid. It's just stupid. What's what's stupid about it? It's you can't really compare the two because Taylor Swift is not just like a singer. She's also a songwriter. She's also a very talented and, and what she's she does. Also she's a goddess, a queen, our Lord and Savior. Like, there's just a lot of things I can say about that. That's Taylor a little much. Don't you think? I think Whitney Houston's also amazing. No, I don't think it's a little much. I think that Whitney Houston is also amazing separately. Um, but that's all I'm going to say about this because anybody that has any opinion on Taylor Swift without actually knowing anything about it, I don't respect it all, and you are included in that. No, I, I, she's a talented I'll, person. She's not Whitney Houston. Keith. You're, 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 you're going to wake up and people get so angry. Why people so angry over Taylor Swift? Because, because I don't like all the injustices happening in this office today. Like everybody's talking like, oh, maybe Jake Gyllenhaal was right. Well, fuck off. Like you don't even know. I don't know who Jake Gyllenhaal is. We'll figure it out. No, but I'm just saying Taylor Swift is is great. Whitney Houston belongs on the Mount Rushmore of female singers. I actually agree. Right, that thank you. Nate thank you. You're Somebody was stupid. In case, in case you didn't hear that, that was Nate saying you're just stupid. No, I heard that, but publicity, uh, Alyssa said that I, she agrees with me. Yeah, Whitney Houston, you can't. Whitney Houston is Whitney Houston. How could you compare Whitney Houston who belts out these amazing notes? Right. The most Taylor beautiful Swift. voice of our lifetime. Have you, have you heard Taylor Swift sing? One's a pop star, Listen, one's a bad I'm a Whitney guy. It's a fucking Taylor Swift is a performer and a writer and everything. It's, she's not a singer like Whitney Houston. Yeah, Susan Boyle has a good voice. Maybe. She's not a singer. Yeah, yeah Susan Boyle. Yeah. Like, what's yeah. happening? What? Nate, come on. Back up. Get back to the other. Uh, you got No, I'm good with Nate. We're fine. Did did that bitch say an injustice? You mean to tell me you, you see all these black and brown people unarmed getting shot and killed in the street and this is an injustice? That white boy sitting over there on that trial right now, what's that white boy name that's sitting there crying and carrying on trying to act like he didn't show up to that rally with them guns and shit? That's an injustice that, they, that they've that they already um, excused him from the uh, the firearm The written house. written house, right? Written house. That's an injustice. White people just be saying anything. And listen, to the white people that are in the comments, don't be messaging me because some of y'all just be saying anything. <laughs> and injustice, that's gross usage of the English language. <laughs> <laughs> and injustice. But that listen, that white guy that was saying that Whitney Houston belongs on the Mount Rushmore of singers, female singers, he was on to something. That being said, have you heard Taylor Swift sing? Yes. Yes. First of all, I drug Taylor Swift and she even had nothing to do with that. You Sorry, to Swift. Sorry to Taylor Swift and her, and her pencil. But I drug Taylor Swift and she didn't have nothing to do with that. Those was those people sitting around. I drug her. You, I, drug that her and I used I used an Aretha drag gowns, nice gowns. <laughs> and look, but Madison, my thing is this. The way that that girl was going on about Taylor Swift is just another example of how white folks speak so confidently wrong. <laughs> confidently wrong. That don't make no sense. Did she just say an injustice? I was like, wait a minute now. She that called Taylor Swift our Lord and Savior. And injustice. What the fuck was Taylor? Shake it off. And bad blood. 
Now, I ain't going to lie to you. Go one ahead. of Whitney Houston's major songs. Just one of them, right? Because there are many. Yes, indeed. Okay? But one of them. One. Yeah. Yeah. Since uh, Taylor Swift's entire catalog, bitch, to the, to, to the beneath. Listen. Is there a one song that you can choose by Whitney, though? Like, if you had to choose a song, like, what's your favorite Whitney Houston song? All the man I need is my ringtone. Oh, yeah. it's That's been your ringtone since I've known you. It's, my, it's been my ringtone ever since. That's your number one song. I love it because it's just the way she, it's just the way it's. Uh, the effort. The, mm -hmm. the effortlessness. The effortlessness of us of just standing it, uh, yeah, and the bravado yeah, yeah. coming through. I don't, and we're not saying that Taylor Swift can't sing. We just saying she not, she's not that. Mine is the same as uh, Ty Williams. Ty Williams said, "You give good love." That's what it is for me. Now I, that doesn't mean that I don't love. Um, I have nothing, and I will always love. Like she has a lot. She has colossal hits. But if I had to choose one, it would be You Give Good Love. And it, it, it really, her voice, I think, was the purest on that song. Like, that was the, the most crisp, clean, and clear her voice ever was. But let me tell and you something, Craig. The media did a good job of really, really trying to, trying. They attempted. Yeah. But that woman's talent outstood all of that. Yes, indeed. The media did a, a, a good... And she helped the media. She helped them. She, she did. helped them. She did. But they did a good job of really trying to tear up her legacy of, of, of her ability, of her gift. Yes. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. But her yes. gift was unmatched. Under, and I don't... <clears throat> and I like Mariah Carey. I was going to say, don't you even say Mariah. I like Mariah Carey. I like Mariah too, but she ain't even a part of this conversation. It's Mariah, it's, it's, Mar Mariah can sing and Mariah can write. Now I'm gonna tell you the thing that Taylor Swift and Mariah have over Whitney is that pen. Whitney didn't write, mm -mm. but when it comes to Mariah's voice, let me she can sing, that. but it, huh? Let me fix all that. <laughs> what? You can write all day. But can mm -hmm. you deliver? Can right. you touch? Can you touch and deliver? You can and write all day. Let me tell you, you can a bitch can write the writers may write those songs, but, but they can't, can't deliver. It. They can't exactly. deliver it. Diane Warren. They can't deliver it. They, they can write a song, but it takes that instrument to bring that writing it, to what, life. What it take, girl? What it take? That instrument to bring that writing to life. What it take? That instrument. <laughs> Just like we knew that Biggie was writing those songs for Little Kim, Kim. We, knew, we knew that. But the way she delivered those songs, I didn't give a fuck who wrote it. Me neither. Me neither. The way that it was delivered. Oh, uh, the way she, the way it was delivered. The way she was on that microphone. Yes. Because you could, you can give that same song to somebody else, uh, <laughs> Dion Warwick, and you be like, girl. <laughs> Some juice. Hold on. Yeah. Can, can you hear me? Yeah. Now I know y'all love Patty LaBelle, but it's just like um Celine Dion made that song a hit, and Patty LaBelle couldn't make it a hit if you ask me to. But see, y'all don't want to talk about that though. Celine made if you ask me to a hit. I don't think Patty, I don't think Patty's got into the top 40. Wait, you better get off of Patty right now. <laughs> but you know, I love I love Patty. I love old Patty. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But wait, I was gonna say this about Mariah. Here's my thing about Mariah Carey. Mariah, can you hear me, Madison? Oh, I can hear you. Okay. Mariah sings, right? But like you said, she doesn't deliver like Whitney. And I'm going to tell you Mariah's biggest problem. And if you really take a moment, everybody that's watching, if you really take a moment and think about what I'm about to say, you'll agree. Mariah's problem is 
she focuses too much on her technique and trying to sound perfect in all of her notes and trying to articulate all of her words. And so for me, in an effort to do that, she loses some of the 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 ethereal part of the song. You know what I'm saying? Like that part that makes you really connect on an emotional level because she's so busy trying to be technical and trying to hit the notes and, and she's too worried about what she looked like. She's trying to be cute. Where Whitney, if you, if you really study Whitney, like her live performances, there were moments where she went to hit a note and you could tell her voice was about to crack or it was a little she missed it, but she would push right through it. Push right on through. She didn't care about her voice being perfect. She would push through it. Where a lot of singers, when they perform live, they'll drop them keys down a step or two or three, Faith Evans, because they ain't trying to sing in the key that they recorded in. Speaking of Faith Evans, did you see that? Girl, did you see how she done stopped eating? She done stopped eating Stevie J's ass. She done had who asked she was over there eating in his house in his house. Did you see that video where they Ooh. he was calling her all kinds of bitches and saying fuck you this and fuck you that? So it made me wonder when I saw that video, well, did she really fuck Tupac or not? We know she did, girl. Nah. You ain't got to Hold look on, I'm looking tree. for something. Hold, hold on. Let no, me you, no you, you ain't got to look for her. <laughs> Tupac said, that's why I fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker. And he said that and he said that it was authority. Uh, you, say, uh, you say nobody was, hold on, wait, we got to go back to this. What? Uh, she said nobody will see uh, Mariah in verses. You are correct. Mariah's catalog is never to be, you. No, Mariah's catalog is not to be denied. And I'm gonna be and I'm and I'm gonna be real honest with you. And I'm a, I'm a Whitney fan. Mariah's but, catalog is better than Whitney. She had better be songs. She had better songs than Whitney had. Yes, but Whitney had a better voice. But Whitney yeah. had a better Whitney had a better technique to me. Mariah mm -hmm. went in places Whitney couldn't go. But it didn't matter. That's it. That's it. That's it. But yeah, I mean, I don't know anybody who really could who could contend with Mariah in terms of her catalog. Mm -mm. I really not none of these R and B children. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. Not none of these are in B children. Mariah's catalog with Mariah Mariah's first album alone. Then follow up with the with the next 15. Cause it's been many times that I've been like Rock Mariah, give those give that song to somebody else. If you writing the girl, you don't got to sing. <laughs> you don't got to sing. See, and, and, and it's funny you said it because that's what I was about to say. I think the problem is when singers are also songwriters, they don't know what songs to keep for themselves and which ones to give away. Because sometimes they love the song so much and they just want to keep it. But it's like, girl, this person over here may, may be able to make it a bigger hit. But, you know, in terms of these verses... I really would like to see Jasmine Sullivan and I would love and I would love to see Mary J. Blige, not together, but I'm just saying I would like to see Mary. I would like to see Jasmine. But Mary has already said she's not going to do it. I want to see Mary and Tony go. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a good one. Mary they and both Tony. Got a seven, they, they both got a seven day song. Seven whole days. And then Mary seven got whole days. Monday, mm -hmm. a friend of mine. Tuesday, mm -hmm. we played a game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. And, 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 yeah, I think that would be a good one. I would love to see Janet Jackson, too, to be honest with you. Versus who? I don't know who she would go against, though. Versus who? I don't know. I don't know. Now, y'all see, I'm glad y'all understanding what I mean about Mariah Carey. Y'all know, I'm glad y'all understanding that.
Oh, they saying Janet versus Madonna. But um, well, no, we need black people. Stop trying to gentrify everything. Stop it, Craig. This is for us. <laughs> Stop it, <Shit>. Craig. <laughs> Maybe J Lo. She's Afro Latino. L Latina. You talking about J Lo and, and Mariah? No, J Lo and Janet. She's a woman of color. Um, uh, Craig. Janet's catalog will swallow J Lo's catalog up. Listen here, it's just J Lo ain't gonna, got enough songs. If she don't have enough, it's just it's there's not enough. Mer See, Craig, you we got to talk about we, we going for we going for yeah, stay in an hour, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, indeed, staying um, in there an hour. We're talking about standing there hour. Now I want to get back to this Mariah Carey thing because I've been drugged many times, but I give Mariah her flowers. But I just prefer, I prefer Whitney over her. But I also follow up behind that and I say, you can cut that shit out about yeah. about somebody battling her. It's not going to happen. You can cut that out and and. Let's be clear completely. Uh, I like Ariana Grande, but there is nowhere in her in 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 in, in, in her space that she has that because I've listened to Ariana Grande sing Mariah's songs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, Mariah, Mariah, Mariah wasn't seeing it. Mariah, was, it, if if Mariah was still in her prime, which she is not, she if is Mariah not. was still in her, she is not. If Mariah was still in her, her prime, she would mop that girl up like spilled milk on the floor because there's still a, a there's still, even though there's not the same soul that Whitney has in her tone, there's mm -hmm. a soul in Mariah's tone that Ariana don't have. Exactly. It's the same thing. So Whitney has a soul that Mariah doesn't have and Mariah has a soul that Ariana Grande doesn't have. Correct. Yeah. And Jennifer Holiday has a soul. I mean, I mean Jennifer. No, Jennifer Hudson don't have the same soul. As I was Jennifer gonna say because I don't want to hear all that growling from Jennifer Holiday. I like okay. The growling is, but this is what you got to understand. That's Jennifer looks scary too. Correct. No, listen to me. I listened to the original soundtrack of Dreamgirls. Yeah. And then I listened to to uh, Jennifer Hudson. Jennifer Hudson's thing. That move, move, you better move. It was that, you better move. You step in on my heart, I said move. It was yeah. more where Jennifer yeah. is. You better move. You step in on my heart, I said move. She's up there. Because she's, she's in her throat. Where Jennifer Holiday was, you she's better move. Chest. It yeah. was more, I, I felt more emotion in it. I felt, and I said that I never read Jennifer Hudson for, because I think Jennifer Hudson can sing. No, I no, we do. That's why we call her Screamer for Hudson. I, but I prefer, <laughs> I, 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 there are things that I listen to by her, but it just is, I just, I'm not going to, and this is not me being shady to her. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to buy her album. Well, first of all, she ain't got enough good songs. That's Jennifer Hudson's problem. Like, I mean, how many good songs does she have? She has Spotlight. I didn't, re I didn't really like that. Where you are or where you, that shit. Uh, Wait a minute. Nikki Sims, I love you, but you say Kiki Wire versus no one. Um, I like Kiki. Kiki ain't got Wyatt. enough songs. It's right. I like Kiki Wyatt, but we she's corny. <laughs> now I will tell you that Kiki Wyatt sings down, but she just ain't got enough albums or songs. It's not enough albums or song, Craig. It's there's also you know there you have to know the moment to. This is why there's no comparison with Whitney because the, Whitney knew the moment when to. 
and pull mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. it, not continue. Ah! Can't nobody sing that shit with you, Kiki. People <laughs> want to be able to sing along. I don't want to yodel. But that. <laughs> but wait, it was something you were saying. I was just about to. I was gonna piggyback on something you said, and I can't remember what it was now. Kiki oversings. Now, Kiki can sing. Don't play. I'm not saying that she doesn't. Listen, listen. And there's no, there is no mother, you know, but I want to, I want her to sing a song from start to finish without all the dramatics. I'd like to hear her go from start to finish. Here's my thing with Kiki. Kiki starts on the mountaintop, and if you start on the mountaintop, ain't nowhere to go. But she's but she has the ability to go higher though, Craig. Exactly. But don't nobody want to hear that when you're driving around in your car that yelling and carrying on. Like who's trying to hear that? And if she came to a versus, what's she gonna do? Play, play those couple songs that she got with um Avant? <laughs> Can somebody so name some other Kiki White song? Kiki oh, Fantasia. Tasha, I love you, but we're not doing that. But I'm gonna tell you who I'm gonna tell you what would be really great if Beyonce and Janet did a did a versus. I would I would like that. Bitch, it'd probably be three million people watching. I would I would I honestly would I would enjoy that. Three million people. Three, three no million people. Tea, no, people shade. no tea, no shade, Craig. I would enjoy that. <laughs> because Beyonce's catalog is longer than the motherfucker, too. We not even finna sit up here and play like that. Yeah, yeah. Because see, Janice's catalog got a little sketchy towards them latter years when she got with Jermaine Dupree. <laughs> I mean, well, they did. Well, she did have that. She did have that one song <laughs> during that era that I liked. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remember the name of that one song? Cat bad, don't hurt me. Oh, that one. <laughs> ah, oh, my God. Oh, my God. But see, I think Janet should have kept her ass over there with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. <laughs> so you can act bad, talk dirty, look sexy, don't hurt me. He got you. He got you. He got you. He got you. Is you, is you calling me? <laughs> <sighs> oh yeah, that song. Yeah. Great. I just got one question. Is you is you is you hungry? <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. It's too funny. But no shade. Y'all know I don't mind. That's why I'm a real ass bitch. No shade. That song eats. Yes, it does. That song eats, bitch. Yes, it, it does. It might not have charted where it should have charted, but that song eats. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And that bitch, bro- that bitch vocals on that song eats. I'm never going to take away that, that raggedy ass host talent, period. <clears throat> right. Because the raggedy ass host, that the talent on the raggedy bitch got is, is just what it's just that she, it's just a, it's just a saboteuring nature. Inside mm-hmm, of the mm-hmm. and that's just what it's gonna be, you know. But that, 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 yeah, baby, baby. is you, is you, is you hungry? Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. So, you know, but I would most definitely enjoy um, Beyonce and Janet. I would enjoy that. Yes, indeed. I would enjoy. I would completely. I would really, really enjoy that. That would be. Uh, somebody that said would they have reached a verdict for Cal Rittenhouse. They have. What's the verdict, girl? No, Beyonce versus Mariah. That's not the same style. They saying Beyonce versus Rihanna. Uh, 
<laughs> Wait, they doing the Busta Rhymes and Misty's, Missy verses? Is that real? But see, for me, I would want to see like a Missy Elliott go against like a Pharrell. Yeah. Or like a Puffy go against like a Dr. Dre. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to see something like that. Because we haven't had those kind of that kind of verse since like the beginning when we had like um, Babyface and um, what's that one? They had all them technical problems. What was his name, y'all? Uh, Teddy Riley. Um, they say for real, we'll eat Missy up. Mm. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. It would be good to see because that's what I'm saying. Like I know he's done a lot of songs. I know she's done a lot of songs for herself and for other people. He's done a lot of songs for himself and other people. So it would be nice to hear those songs that you've kind of forgotten about. So, I mean, it would be hard. It would just be enjoyable to watch. Because, I mean, he's done a lot of shit for Jay-Z. You know what I'm saying? She's done a lot of shit. Like, she pulled out that Nicole Ray shit. Why you all in my grill? Yeah, you remember that? Janet, they said Janet versus Madonna. No, Craig has already spoken about the reasonings why. This is for black people only. <laughs> oh Look, God, they God. have signs and shit. Colors. Colors only, no colors, no white people for the verses. Don't okay? do that, Craig. Don't do that now. Y'all can watch, but you just can't participate. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can watch. You just can't be a guest. Y'all got the Super Bowl. <laughs> Look, they barely give us a spot on the Super Bowl. Somebody said Mary and Keisha Cole. Keisha ain't got enough songs for Mary. No. Tony Braxton. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Now you you're not a, a Sade fan, but I would love to see Sade come up through there. Oh, I'm a Sade fan. Are you crazy? Oh, you do like Sade? Somebody tell me they don't like Sade. Did you want me, baby? I, who would you like? I would like to see Sade and maybe like an Anita Baker or some shit. Even though their man, genres are kind of slightly different, but it's slightly different because let me tell you why. You put Anita Baker on and you put Sade on right afterward, your house gonna be clean from top to bottom. Listen here. You put that orange album, the the best of Sade on, and then you put on the, that black album, the best of Anita Baker, the house is gonna be clean from the top to the bottom. You better know it. You better know it. So I would Anita love Baker, to see Regina Bell. No, okay. See what y'all doing is y'all putting the same genres. That, uh, Regina Bell ain't got enough. Regina Bell singing gospel now. We only Regina know Bell ain't have no a bunch of songs. We only know. Someone tell me. We only baby know. Come uh, to me. Baby, come to me. And tell she me had something. Dreaming color. Okay. And then now she had that song with Peebo Bryce in a whole new world. Seven more. Then she got uh, All I Want Is Forever, and she was just kind of a guest vocalist on that because that was that guy singing that. All I Want Is Forever. You remember that song? Seven more, Craig. That's all she got. <laughs> I don't know no more. I don't know other ones. Somebody put so CC Wines versus Anita Baker. No, that's not even the same. We, that's, that's not even the same. We not doing that. I would love to see Mary and Faith, but Mary says she ain't gonna do it. But but yeah, I'll Regina, you say Re Mary. okay now Regina and Mickey Howard, maybe. So what are they gonna do? Ten songs? Four. <laughs> right. I've been trying to tell myself. I don't, I don't need you. you. Uh, Regina and Shirley Murdoch. Actually, Shirley Murdoch and, and, and Shirley Murdoch and Mickey Howard could battle each other. Regina can't battle nobody, girl. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Regina can't battle. We're not being messy. We just being real. Shirley Murdoch only got about three songs. Yeah, Shirley Murdoch got a good. Got, she got a good five. And Mickey Howard got a good five. Let's so let's so. 
we'll be there for a good hour if they say they whole song <laughs> all the way through. They sing the whole song and tell yeah. a little story about each song. Um, I can't. Even, only things. Only. Only. Go on without you by Shirley Murdoch and um, as we lay. They're the only two songs. I know. Oh, she got husband. That's three. Husband, I still love you, girl. See, girl. See, see, see. Hold on. I still love you is a song you like. That ain't no hit. I still love you. There's a lot of people that sitting here with pen and paper in my hand. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Girl, uh, only you and the people in her record label know that song. And uh, I. <laughs> <laughs> you and the people at her record label know that song. <laughs> they said, Maddie and Craig, tell them again how no one going on there with Tina. Y'all went up. Y'all went up about Tina, Queen of Rock. I mean, no shade. There ain't nobody that could battle Miss Tina. Oh, can't nobody mess with Tina Turner. I can't nobody. There's no battling that. Ain't nobody. We can't even like line nobody up to say that's going to be a battle. I can't think of nobody to go up against Tina Turner. Uh-uh. Ain't no battling in that. Ain't no that's right. Nobody is in Tina's lane. No. Period. Hmm. Uh say Diana Ross. Nobody's and nobody actually's in Diana's lane either, to be honest with you. No. To be talking about verses that those are two girls that sit in the, that are in their lane. <clears throat> the only girl that I think could have gone up against uh, Diana would have been Aretha. Uh, you know what, Craig? You know what? Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm I'm seeing where you're going with that. Mm-hmm. She the only one that I think could have really. Yeah. Oh, they talking about Dion. Mm -hmm. Dion. Dion and Dion and Diana. No. Uh. -uh. They said the case was um, not guilty. Uh, what, what, did you see how the judge was carrying on, bitch? Well, you knew it was what it was gonna be. Yeah. <clears throat> Basically. Um <clears throat> I wasn't surprised by that. Basically. You and that's why the verse that's why the verses is for us. It's why you can't be surprised that that about shit like that. You can't. That's oh, see, see somebody here said 20 hits that charted. See, that's what I be thinking, too. But see, some of them songs that they be singing and performing don't be singing or playing aren't always hits that charted. Who? When they do these um, verses. Somebody in here said 20 hits that charted. But they're not always playing 20 hits that charted. Baby, they say Diana Ross is not on Aretha's level. Disrespectful. Uh, I, I, I agree. I agree. But I was just thinking in terms of hits. Well, uh, nah. Let's let's hold on, Craig. Hold on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> back, back up the car. Hold on. Uh huh. We need to hold on right now. <laughs> Go ahead. We're not going to act like Diana Ross wasn't a ooh ah, ooh ah, ooh ooh ah. She wasn't a doo-wop queen. Her and them girls. Mary Wilson and them. And if we really want to get specific, Diana Ross's mo major hits were with the Supreme. She ain't got a lot of solo hits. Crazy. Not enough to contend with Aretha. Muscle. Not solo hits. Muscles eating the live I'm motherfucking out. coming out the boss uh, inside out. Uh, uh, the, uh, the boss that's on the uh, Donnie the Delos. boss, uh, girl Craig. Uh uh, 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 we're not finna do Diana, she may not be on our top list of vocalists, correct, 
Cause she got a roll but, um rice crispy cake voice. But we not finna do her as far as Aretha is a staple. Diana Ross yeah. is also a staple. Correct. We not finna do this. Like Diana Ross is a, that's the girl. Oh, um, somebody said missing you. I forgot about that song. Uh, Y'all talking about Roberta Flack. Uh, Ooh. Okay. Now, I love Roberta Flack. Now. I do too, but it's just not enough that we know. We know all her songs. Tonight, I celebrate to you. You know that. You know waiting. Uh, what is the song called? Um where is the love? Where is the love? You said you give to me. Closer I get to you. You know, closer I get to you. The one that Luther was singing. No, her and Donnie Hathaway. The closer. Oh yeah, yeah. He remade it. Yeah, he remade it with Beyonce. Yes. I forgot about their remake. Um. Girl, now I do like this. Somebody put the clock sisters versus the pay sisters. Killing me softly. Um, if ever I saw your face, yes. They still listing Roberta hits. Roberta has some hits. Um, the clock sisters versus the pay sisters. The pay sisters ain't got enough hits to, to go against the clock sisters. But the question is, who has more powerful voices? Well, how many of the pay sisters are still living? I've been over there watching. Do you know that LaShawn Pace? I mean, I was I was a real big fan of that LaShawn Pace, honey, with that, you know, because she has a real mm, but I did, but I also gotta remember that they are gospel girls. Mm-hmm. And they're and they are rooted in the old time gospel. And the old time gospel <clears throat> root mean, means no punks. <laughs> I feel like making love. No, Craig, why did you look sad and then try to move on? This while I be very, very, I be very on the on the fence about being fans of the gospel girls. Right. Especially, especially the older time gospel girls, because the Kojic means no punk. And I'm so them- sick of senses, I don't know what to do. Francis Kelly. And my thing is, a lot of them over there. I'm so sick of sissies. I don't know what to do. I see sissies, sissies, sissies everywhere. Sissies, sissies, sissies. So I'm real. And even with the, that's why I don't really care for that. For I don't really, I re, ain't nothing that that lady could ever do that it really make me really care. And I, but I do feel that she could sing boots. You talking about Kim Burrell? That bitch can sing. She can sing, but I, I just don't. And you know what irritates me is when the gays are like, yeah, but she can sing. But it's like, but you supporting somebody who hates you, your very being. Like, yeah. it's not, you may as well go out here and support somebody who's uh, like uh, 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 uh. She don't hate nobody. This, she's only following what God's words, God's word. Well, you may as well go out here and support these white races. That's a whole nother conversation, Craig, because, I, and I'm, I'm, see, I'm playing devil's advocate here. See, here, the issue is you, you was, you, you was born black. You wasn't born gay. You chose to be gay. And so, you know what I'm saying? By you choosing to be a homosexual, you get what I'm saying? You you chose that life. And so that's what comes with it. That's the hate gonna come with it. But you ain't hello. I'm here. You know that's the you know that's the line, Craig. Nah. Uh, yeah. You know that's the line. Ain't that's the line, Craig? Uh uh-uh, uh uh uh. That is the line. Uh uh-uh. uh. No no no. Listen now, you ain't choose to be black. God made you black. He ain't make you gay. You chose that. And so whatever come along with your choices of you being a fag, that's what you get. <laughs> of you being a what? A fag. That's what you get. God <laughs> a fag like... or a cross dresser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a he she. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody told you to be a fag. Nobody told me a fact. You want to be one of them things out there. You ain't no real woman. 
You can't have no children and be his wife. Oh God. You oh, all I also God. can't have an abortion. I also can't do that many, many times. And I still get a prostate exam. <laughs> right. I also <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> oh my God. That's the best. But yeah, I'm like you though. I'm I'm very finicky when it comes to the gospel people too, because you just don't know. Because I used to be a yeah. fan of Mary Mary until that, that Tina. Oh, that thing that terrorizes me. I think, and, and she a Trump supporter too. And you a Trump supporter for the wrong reasons. Exactly. A lot of those people be Trump supporters because of the, the for the wrong. They see them doing all that, and people be so focused. This is why our country fucked up. And this is why when I went on the Breakfast Club, Craig, I tried to be as black as right. possible and as queer as possible at the mm. same fucking time. Mm -hmm. Because the people needed to understand, okay, that we ain't we ain't black first and then queer later, or we ain't queer first and then we black. This at the same time. It's concurrent. And so when those folks was really a lot of those colored folks was really down there voting listening. in their own interests in their own interests and things that had stuff that was wrapped up into they they saw those anti-rhetoric that was at all a lot of that anti stuff and, and and a lot of that campaign was really built on a lot of anti-lgbt stuff yeah yeah and the, and the, and a lot of the colors a lot of the colors International House of Greg. Mm -hmm. A lot of the colors had felt that, that that Barack Obama did lots of things for the phase, the phase, the gays, and the lesbians. Okay. Right. They right. felt that they did a lot, that he, that administration did a lot for that. And because that administration put a lot of time, energy, effort into the phase and gays and stuff like that. They when they voted for Trump, they wanted home. to go in there and undo a lot of that. They wanted to undo a lot of that, and they just and they and they and they really, really was like, we don't want another administration like they're doing nothing for the for the gays. And then you have the colors that go through, like the Umar Johnsons that get up there on the Breakfast Club and say a lot of stuff like you know how how they try to do that divide. Well, they passed the bill for LBGTQ people ain't gay to black folks nothing, mm -hmm. and you like. Sir, do you understand that there are black LBG? So when you say they ain't gave the black folks nothing, we ain't get it either. Right. We ain't they think get we it got either. something because we, we have some badge to be like, well, I'm gay, so yeah, we didn't get it. They ain't getting they ain't got to do because when they when, when, don't start us, Craig, because we'll be on this bitch for about 30 more minutes. Right. And see, to your point. When black folks who were, like you said, trying to undo what Barack Obama put into place, it's like they ignored the fact that Trump had Mexican children or immigrants down in them cages. They ignored all of this other shit. He he undid a lot of that. Um, like when you like how you could write your house off on your tax. Trump und undid a lot of that shit too. I'm gonna tell you another thing he did. He removed a lot of funding from um, HBCUs. Historically black colleges and universities. Uh, so like a lot of these schools were suffering because Trump pulled the pulled the pulled the money plug. But see, a lot of black folks who were thinking, oh, well, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and undo this this gay shit, but you didn't look at all these other policies that he had in place. Correct. That entire administration, you know, and, and let's and let's and let's talk about it before we walk off of this situation in the next four minutes. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about how this this Biden administration is doing so bad right now that that it's going it's just opening the open the door for a whole republic for the Republicans to get in and handle this shit for the next the next eight years. Cause just to show as these four years up, we ain't gonna see we ain't seen Kamala right now. We ain't gonna see them no more. Just to show ain't seen her. I don't know what Joe Biden has done since he's been in office. The only thing he did. Listen, the only thing Joe Biden did was forget. He didn't even forgive those student loans. What he did was he offset it so people didn't have to pay. Like, you don't have to pay your student loans until February of this year coming. So that's the only thing he did. But in terms of, I mean. Right. It, right. Just, it, it makes no sense. Yeah. And like all, uh, like, 
Kamala Harris was going on about being an AKA. She wrote on that forever. And Hold all on, the AKAs please, jumped, not all the AKAs, but a lot of the AKAs there jumped on her. You're being and then challenged, she went on and on about being a Howard grad. Craig, you're being challenged. Though I'm not a Trump supporter, Trump was the president that allocated the most money for HBCUs and made it. Listen, I just had a conversation with a friend of mine that's in recruiting the other day, and he removed a lot of that funding because there are a lot of black colleges, HBCUs that are struggling every year. And a lot of their um, money that was provided to them through the government, through the federal government, a lot of that was taken. Yeah. So, I mean, what they, they just don't even understand that they rallied for the for the black vote like they did. They're not getting it four years from now or two. Well, how many how long he been in there? Who how long Biden been in there? Yeah. He sleep. I bet he he went, he, you know. Uh-uh. I must say this, Craig, and I'm definitely gonna go because I know I'm gonna get in trouble, but I don't give a fuck. What? Who you calling? I was about to call my friend in New York who was telling me about this whole HBCU thing the other day. She just texted me about the white boy Rittenhouse and now she's not answering the phone. But go ahead. Financially, I do better during a, during a, when Republicans are in office. But it's not about me being financially stable. Hello? I'm here. And see, that's another reason why a lot of black people voted for him, too, because they were trying to protect their purses. But no shade. I mean, this is I'm, I'm being honest, though. But I still got up and went down there and voted because I felt like, you know, there were so many different things. And they, bitch, you know, you know, so I just I, I, I went down there and voted for the children. But mm -hmm. I do anytime when. Bush was in office. Huh. Right. What year I bought this house? 2007? Uh -huh. what, year, what year was Bush in office? Girl, let me see. What year was Bush in office, y'all? Yeah. Right? And look, somebody said, how do you vote for people who write laws to stop you from voting? And that's the other thing, because it's just like when black folks were standing in these lines this last time and you had people bringing up water bottles and fruit and shit, they ended up writing a law here that you couldn't that it was illegal to go up to. You couldn't you couldn't bring nobody. You couldn't bring a chair like they were trying to create all of these things so that you couldn't. You know what I'm saying? So you couldn't support people while they were in the line. They said he was. Um, yeah. OK. Right. From 2000 well, to in 2009. When when Obama got in, in the office, contrary to what was what, what people may believe or what they was told out there in the world, bitch, I've been paying my motherfucking taxes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, and so I might have skipped two or three years of paying taxes, bitch, and 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 wrapped them up at the end of a certain time because you can't because legally you can do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I've been been paying my motherfucking taxes bitch right I, I know how my tax shit changed when the obama administration came in right how things went to you know changing around i was like oh my god just like i i did feel the woo wham whoop with the biden administration mm -hmm. <coughs> and you know somebody the person who you said was challenging me about the hbcu thing Biden has put some of that stuff back in place that Trump removed because there was like there was a lot of money that that HBCUs were able to um, to pull from. But then he removed a lot of that. Oh, Letitia Williams said this right here. She said, I'm a Democrat, a thousand percent, but it's a vaccine man. It would not allow me to vote for them next time. I felt forced to tell someone they cannot have a job. Yeah, they did a lot of stuff in this term that's going to really keep them, that's going to really, really, the vote is going to be different in the next three years. The mm -hmm. vote going to be, it's going to be a different, it's going to be different. The polls are most definitely going to be, uh, it's going to be reflection of how we felt these four years. Right. 
Mm-mm-mm. It's crazy. He said they still have three more years. Yeah, and in them three years, yeah, they only been in there for about a year. Well, just know that they ain't get. Just know that all the things. <laughs> Here go. Wait a minute. Why the fuck is she not answering this phone? Like, this is what pisses me off. We literally just had this conversation about. She's not answering. She said she don't want to be a part of this grid. <laughs> yeah, she ain't answering. But anyway, um, Ooh, I need to run to the Home Depot. Little Craig. Look. That is true. Listen here. The Trump was not our best president. Our best president was Obama. Okay. In my opinion. That might be y'all opinion, but in my opinion, that was our best president. Who Obama? I love you too, Lori. So I already said your friend lying to you, Craig. She don't know the truth. That's right. Somebody said if you support Trump, that's your business. No apology necessary. I mean, that's the way I feel too. Like that's your business. But I am side eyeing you a little bit because I know a lot of things that was going on, like what they were definitely going after in that administration. So I am right, side listen. eyeing you. I'm on Politifact. And it says Trump's exaggerated claim that he saved HBCUs with 2019 funding bill. And it says uh, President Trump's signing of the Future Act in 2019 made a significant allocation of federal funding for HBCUs uh, permanent beyond 2019. It's not clear how Trump, how involved Trump was before signing the legislation, before it hit his desk. And then it says two experts calculated the total federal funding provided to the HBCUs, those numbers show little change between the Obama years and the first year under Trump. President Trump exaggerated his contributions to historically black colleges and universities during the final presidential debate, claiming he saved the minority institutions when he signed a bill, permanently extended a stream of federal funding beyond 2019. But at any rate, this was fun. We haven't done this in a while. Mm-hmm. Now that's true. He only um forgave uh loans for certain people. And like she said, it was disabled people or something. And I think yeah. if you worked in certain professions. Wait a minute, and we gone after this. Everyone has their reasons. I didn't judge a person to decide to vote for him, but some of y'all equated those people who voted for them as agreeing with his racist behavior. Well, in some ways, you have to say that because it's like you can't. How you can can't. You, not, you can't close your eyes. I mean, you can't no close shame. your eyes to all of the. You can't kids. close your eyes to it. You cannot close your eyes and be like, "Well, you know, he did do this," but you can't. You cannot For the lesser your... of the two evils. Yeah. Right. You can't just say, all right, well, 
okay, well he yeah, he might be saying he might be he might be giving it to a racist rhetoric, but no. Right. You but can't, he did you can't give do some this. HBCUs. No. No, niece. You can't do that. And I did feel that way. I felt that way. And I felt like a lot of blacks, a lot of colored folks got in there, rich colored folks got in there, and they voted for him to save their, their pocket. And, yeah. a, and rich colored folks, and rich, rich, rich colored folks, and, and anti LBGTQ colored folks got in there with that shit. I believe they got in there in the paint with that because and I, and a lot of and you and a lot of you LGBTQ folks you also have internalized homophobia and transphobia. You also have war you be warring against yourself. Mm -hmm. And you will you will sign a bill because you think that you're passing a lot of you girl Craig after I say this I'm gone. Okay, go ahead. A lot of you girls I see this is why I say TS cuz I know that I'm transsexual. Mm -hmm. A lot of you girls out there thinking y'all can pass. But the moment when the time comes for all the phase gays and lesbians to load up that ship that they're going to send to that burning place, your tea will be clocked, boo. <laughs> <laughs> your tea will be clocked. You ain't, you ain't that blendable that they don't know. It's in your DNA, bitch. It's in your DNA. And it's so crazy that how a lot of folks vote against their own self or how they go out there and they rally and they campaign against them own self. I have I have really never been more befuddled, bewildered, perplexed. Perplexed. I have never been more like gagging on how the people will get out there and vote against themselves. Yeah. Like a Caitlyn Jenner, for example. Yes. 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 But y'all don't want to have that kind of conversation because, baby, we'll be here for two days on that. And you can vote for who you want to, but just know that with their time that you sign your own death warrant. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. All right, well, listen, you guys have an amazing day. Thanks for having me on, Madison. This was fun. Yeah, we got to do it out more often. Yeah. But you've been so busy, girl. You know no, that's I mean? you, girl. You all in New York. I am. LA. I am. And I'm going back. And I she am. over here on um, this Facebook audio room and shit. That. And also Facebook sound bites. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that. And also, girl, at, you know, at Universal Pictures and also at Netflix and also, girl, I'm working, girl. I am a transsexual. I'm not a female, <laughs> bitch. I got titties at the top, dick at the bottom. <laughs> I got to stack all my coins, all of them. Well, listen, if you all need to read some books, go on over to CraigRedderStewart.com. <laughs> look, look you, see how your, you see how your homosexual self got to get on here and stack your coins? You see listen, how you do it? I, 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 like I don't know when you, I don't know when you will give me a job again, girl. So listen, if girl, you want I'm, me to I'm write, I'm dogs, writing you into something. I know that you. Yeah, I was on BET Plus and Miss Pat. I'm writing you into something, Craig, girl. I'm writing you, know, you a place. You know, because you nobody know you always the book, so. Girl, they never bought them, girl. I don't know how you bought that house, girl. <laughs> it's all that fraud you. It's all that fraud you brought with you from that D district of, from that Baltimore. You came from that Baltimore, bro. Well, you know, I write about my past former um, uh, indiscretions, <laughs> and um, I write about those in the first two books, because the first two books are memoirs. <laughs> so I write about the days when I was writing checks and writing credit cards and things. Ain't no know. wrong that most, PO, most P-O-U-N-K's did it. Most punks did it, bro. <laughs> they did. <laughs> ah. Oh my God. So listen, if you need to purchase a book, go on over to CraigTheWriterStewart.com. I will sign them and ship those out to you immediately. If you were an Elon Harris fan, then you are going uh -huh. to love the first two books. Amen. It'll get all of the juices and stuff flowing down in your neither region. Right. Did you get those did you get those grammatical errors together yet? <laughs> You know I ain't read it because you know I don't read no damn books either, motherfucker. Way. <laughs> right. My last name is Stewart. Somebody said, "What's your last name?" According to you, I don't read books either, damn way. 
Craig Stewart. Speaking of books, though, I do want to get that Will Smith book. You know, he's been intriguing me lately. Just really coming out about the things that we have already known, but just like really admitting these things. Like he's really been, you know, that Jada was wore the pants in the relationship. She was the man in the relationship. And she probably was pegging him. Pegging. I do feel I that's that ass. No, there, I'm not doing no allegedly on that. That ass got that was too fat back there. And Jada got real alpha male energy. I mean alpha female energy. I mean alpha whatever. It's real, just real alpha energy, honey. And it trickled over there into them children, and them children is all, you know, fluid and stuff like that. <laughs> That's right, Dorian Powell. Them children all fluid and stuff. Cup running, running them over and things. The only one that you don't really hear a lot about is his oldest son, Trey. Ooh, that thing fine. He is sexy. Oh my God. Now, now Willow and Jaden, they are fluid. Oh my God, that thing! That, now that first boy, I don't see none of that fluidity going on in that. No, no, no. but <laughs> baby, that boy fine though. My God, but you know the streets, the streets of Baltimore were talking for years. You know, because Jada grew up around the corner from me. I didn't know her, but we went to the same middle school, Falstaff Middle. And um, you know, the, the streets were saying that she was part of the um, community for a little while. But don't come out in the wash, but definitely come out in the rinse, honey. <laughs> hey, hi, y'all. I'm on shot time. Yeah, they, they, the streets of Baltimore said she used to tip through the tulips. <laughs> they said she loved floral arrangements, honey. <laughs> <laughs> she, she used to tip through the tulips once upon a time. Hey, baby, you know what they say. I once was a homosexual. But Jesus took that homosexual, homosexual spirit out of me. Oh God! Wait, Craig, we didn't we didn't understand. She said she was what? I once was a homosexual, but Jesus took that homosexual, homosexual spirit out of me. <laughs> oh God! Girl, I used to say she used to tip through the tulips, honey, but she was tipping with the white folks. Well, that's usually how it happens and stuff like that. You know. But anyway, we're not going to go on that, Craig, because ain't nothing wrong with interracial dating. Nothing wrong with that, period. Interracial gay dating. Interracial dating, period. You might not find your, you might not find what you need in, in your race. You may not listen, find what you need. And I agree. Because, listen, to all of my black women out here, especially, listen, don't hold yourself hostage waiting out, waiting, holding out for a black man. Listen, you if you have to find love did. outside of the black community, then you see what a black man did to the, you see what a black man did to that red girl, the one he the yellow bone. Yellow bone is what he wants. Yellow bone. Oh! She thought that that PT Cruiser wasn't gonna drive through her hood <laughs> and drive off. She thought he was gonna park that PT Cruiser right in her garage. Park that PT Cruiser right in my little garage. <laughs> ah, but that's just the misconception that a lot of ladies make. Yeah, a lot, a lot of ladies make that misconception about that that Willie Wonka go to ticket pussy. A lot of they make a lot of misconceptions about that. But you know, they 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 truly learn as as the time goes on. Anyway, y'all, this has been our show. We love y'all. Craig, go on and have your business. I'm going I'm to um, download this. Y'all, let's see this again on okay. Craig's page. All, All right, right y'all. See y'all later. Bye, y'all. Bye. Quit talking and listen. Get over to my Patreon right now so that you can receive some exclusive content from the TS herself. Who you said? The TS. Patreon is filled with one-on-one -on -one 
exclusive content, behind the scenes. You can even chat with me in there, me and you. It's just me and you. So get to www.patreon.com forward slash T.S. Madison Hinton and you'll be glad you did. I promise. This has been a T.S. Madison and RDE Multimedia Group presentation. Hey guys, if you just enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash T.S. Madison Hinton. Or if you're already here, click that bell up there, up there, one of them, and subscribe so that you don't miss this or any other excellent content that I have for you. Don't meet me here. Beat me here. Ciao.